Ukraine announced a bid for fast-track membership of NATO last September after the Kremlin said it had annexed four Ukrainian regions that its troops have partially occupied. The Kremlin reiterated to reporters on a conference call that Moscow opposed NATO admitting Ukraine, a former Soviet republic. Dmitry Peskov, who's the uh, Kremlin spokesman, said that otherwise it will present a serious, significant danger to the security of our country. Now you'll have these morons say, ha ha, but Finland has joined NATO. Oh, guess your strategy doesn't work, Putin. I mean, look, uh, as they say, you know, the battle may be lost, but the war has just begun. So that might be their position in Russia. The other, the, the other thing that one might add is, is that, uh, uh, you know, Finland does, it does share a border with the Russians, but it's not Ukraine. They don't, you know, you have to understand Ukraine from an emotional, from an emotional and cultural point of view is way, way, way closer to Russia than Finland is. The border is also bigger. Uh, well, it's, it's, again, it's not a question of, 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 of who has the bigger border with Russia because they have already got five, five six countries now bordering Russia. But I go back to my original point, which is the emotional and, and cultural and linguistic connection between Russia and Ukraine. They, they were literally one country at, at one point, not that long ago. It was the same country, right? It, Finland wasn't. Do you, do you understand? So for Russians to accept that Ukraine is now a NATO member is much hard, harder to swallow than to accept Finland. Now, from a security point of view, you could once again argue that, you know, uh, that both are, there are pros and cons. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't see many pros, but... You could, you could argue which is the lesser evil for, from their point of view, from the Russian point of view, right? Some of them might think that Ukraine being in NATO in terms of security presents a greater risk. Uh, others might say it's Finland. I, I think, I mean, me personally, my opinion is that this is just provocation. Uh, you know, uh, whether, <laughs> you know, the border between NATO members and Russia is this big or that big, it's, it's the same. It's the same thing. If you start putting, you start coming to my house, my country, my castle, you know, and outside my moat, <laughs> you've got, you know, you're sending knights and cavalry to stare at me from across the moat or across the field. I'm going to feel provoked and I'm going to do some shit about that. This is, you know, this, this is no different from how the Americans would act. And you know that for a fact, just look at the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's a fact. Look at how they lost it. They lost it when the Soviets put nuclear missiles in Cuba. And hey, <laughs> the Soviets did this after the Americans put nuclear missiles in Turkey. The Jupiter missiles. The Cubans allowed the Soviets to do that after the Americans tried to coup the Cuban government. So the Cubans and the Soviets had every right to do that from their point of view. And if we're looking at who started it, the Americans did. The Americans attacked Cuba. The Americans threatened so Soviet Union. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a response to American aggression. A response. It wasn't an escalation or an instigation. Escalation, yes, you could argue it was. <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, the, the Soviets starting or something or the Cubans starting something. No. Now, was that the wise thing to do? I don't know. It also almost destroyed the planet, so maybe not. But you understand how when the Americans realized there are nuclear missiles, you know, near their borders, they lost it. So why is this, why is this so difficult to grasp for people in the West that five, six NATO countries bordering Russia is going to piss the Russians off at one point or another? You know, and the fact that the, fin, the Finns are joined up doesn't make that any better. It's still, it's still going to make the Russians angry, you know, and... and uh, yeah, I, I think this is insane that they try to present it. Oh, it's, 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 it's purely, purely Russian aggression. You want, you want some aggression? I'll show you aggression, man. Look at Iraq, 2003, Britain and the, U and the United States. That's aggression. That's real aggression. You know, the Russians, they can at least argue that their border, they literally share a border with Ukraine. Are you going to tell me Iraq and the United Kingdom share a border? <laughs> There's no threat there. And yet most people, you know. They kind of acquiesced to that. Not everyone. I think most of the world was quite angry and awake. But uh, over time, you know, people kind of just like shrugged their arms and, oh, well, 